Speaking of a pair of tits, here's McDonald Land on the NES. But is this one any good? Let's have a little look. Admittedly, Global Gladiators was my first encounter with Mick and Mac. It was only when I bought a cheap NES console that one of the four games that came with it was McDonald Land, and I instantly recognised the two characters. This was named MC Kids in other regions, just in case you may think this is a different game, and also rehashed to make Cool Spot. This is a game by Virgin who don't make bad games that I've seen. However, after seeing this awful title screen, I may change my opinion. The story is that the Hamburglar has stolen Ronald McDonald's magic bag at a picnic. Mick and Mac have been asked to help Ronald out to get it back for him. You need to find four magic cards in the levels in order to progress. You start off in a hub world, a bit like Mario 3 where you can choose one of the six levels to play. Each level will have a card hidden somewhere. In the top left is where you'll have your golden arches counter, your lives and your hit points displayed as hearts. You can pick up blocks and throw them, a bit like Chip and Dale or Chuck Rock. These can be thrown at enemies and clear them off the screen. There are springs that will send you high into the air to get to higher platforms, and some require you to carry a block in order for them to work. You can also find these spinner blocks that will turn you upside down and defy gravity, but watch out for the reverser blocks as they'll send you flying back to the start. Once you get to the end of the level, there'll be a sliding M on a line. Simply walk into it to finish the level. There are one-up blocks to find too, but you'll probably lose a life trying to get it. Throughout the levels you can collect the golden arches. Once you've collected 100 of them, you can go to a bonus level. But due to its slippery controls, I gave up on this. As for the levels themselves, they look very bright and colourful, but not in a good way. They look like something that's been made on Microsoft Paint. Mick and Matt look like Duplo characters, and they control like a snake on butter. The controls themselves aren't actually that bad, but the momentum will catch you out a lot. The times I tried to get from leaf to leaf here was ridiculous. Trying to hit an enemy was sometimes an issue, as fumbling with the controls made me fall off a ledge and plummet to my death. Making my way through these levels was a very tiring experience, as sometimes you have to make a leap of faith and hope you don't fall down a hole or land on an enemy. This felt like a similar experience with Bubsy. Once the cards had been collected, it was off to another world, which is Birdie's Treehouse. And by this point, I'd really lost interest in the game. This again was full of pits and stupid platforms, and ultimately, death. I'd like to say this is a good game, but it can go fuck itself. It's full of short platforms, pits, and dickhead enemies that are placed in areas that if you only have one hit left, and you don't have a block, then you're pretty much fucked. There was nothing here to keep me hooked. Once you have gone mad trying to find a card, it's on to the next level where you do the same. The principle is the same with most games, but others make it more appealing. It felt like there was a lot missing in this game. The music, however, I thought was quite good for the time. It's upbeat and suits the game well. There's a pumping 90s track in there that sounds good. The sound effects are okay, that don't offend the ears, but that's about the only good thing going for it. This game can be picked up pretty cheap, and there's a reason for that. This won't be a classic anytime soon. It's not in a class of shovelware games, but it's got its toes in the water for it, 